Good evening, everybody. We're back on the couch in the living room. We have two new guests this time. And again, you can call in. It's a live show. The number is 617-708-3280. On the couch with us now is Ernest from Glass, and we have Fabiola from Hope. So we're just going to pick up the conversation now that we know a little <laughs> bit about what each organization does, but we'll get into specifics. So what do you do at Hope, Fabiola? Oh, well, I'm the partner-based coordinator, and what I do is I reach out to some of the community organizations that Farron was talking about earlier, um, such as, um, you know, drop-in centers for young people, such as Bridge Over Told Waters. I get in touch with um, the Department of Youth Services and Department of Children and Families to connect them with our services. So we'll offer HIV counseling and testing, STI screenings, hepatitis C screenings as well, and offer sexual health workshops. Um, and we also, and I'll also be able to offer RESPECT, which is our two-session counseling intervention for young people. So um, that's pretty much the gist of what we do, okay. or what I do at, at Hope for Youth. Okay, and Ernest, what are, you, what are you doing over at GLASS? Well, my title is the Supportive Services Coordinator, okay. uh, which basically entails, for the, the big part of that, is case management. Okay. So. Uh, for me, it's really about meeting the youth where they are, first and foremost. And so case management entails um, if they need transportation to go to a doctor's appointment, um, if they need information about getting a GD, um, getting into health services, um, DTA, food stamps, um, homelessness, homeless prevention is a big piece of what I do. Um, and so a lot of the challenges that we see, you know, um, when we're talking about HIV infections and we're talking about uh, substance abuse, um, there's a lot of other challenges part of that story. Right. You know, like, like homelessness, like I mentioned, poverty, racism, homophobia in the community. Um, so my position is really coming from a very holistic perspective okay. on those issues. All right. So do you find that there are a number of uh, youth out there that are now homeless as a result of them coming out to their parents? I mean, are, are they being actually thrown out of their home? And, you know, can you just share a little, like, anecdotally, you know, share a little bit of, you know, about, like, some of the situations that you deal with kind of on a day-to-day -day basis? Definitely. Uh, some of the cases, that is the case, unfortunately. Um, the parent um, sort of makes sort of the rule that, you know, either you're going to either you're going to be straight or either you're going to get out of my house type of thing. Um, also, sometimes it's um, the, um, the youth's choice. They're in a very uncomfortable, un very unwelcoming, very homophobic home. Um, and so there's a lot of different um, challenges within that situation. And so they might be couch surfing, for example, um, uh, living at a friend's house, uh, things like that. Okay, okay. And, um Lee, would you like to add a little to the conversation? Sure. Um, what are the numbers that we're looking at in terms of, is GLASS the drop-in center? Yes. Okay. So what are the numbers that, that we're looking at maybe on a weekly basis of, um, of youth that come in? And also kind of take us through the process. Say if someone to come, were to come in and say, you know what, um, I'm questioning my sexuality, or I've, I'm, maybe they're not even questioning their sexuality. Maybe they know what they are, but maybe they're questioning that, you know, they have, they feel like they might have a disease. They don't know, you know, like what's the process, like when, when they first come through the door, and what numbers are we looking at? <coughs> well, me. on a weekly basis, I would say um, somewhere around like 50 to 60 um, um, youth. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of youth that come regularly. There's some youth that come in just for the services. Some come to chill, drop in, um, safe space. Mm -hmm. um, so when the youth come in, that they have not been there before, they um, are immediately greeted at the door, mm -hmm. they're told to sign in, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they are taken through this intake process, mm -hmm. which means that they sat down, discuss sort of some of the rules and regulations and policies that we have, mm -hmm. um, but also the most important thing out of that is really figuring out what their needs are. Mm -hmm. And that's where we determine who to place them with. Mm -hmm. Like if it's food or anything, they'll place them with me. Um, um, if it's sort of like you said, question of sexuality, having issues at home, having some mental um, um, issues mm -hmm. around the sexuality, they will be um, referred to our therapists on staff. Okay. 
And as far as hope for youth, um, the point is to bring, to make these programs as low threshold as possible mm -hmm. for young people. So offering STI testing and screening or um, HIV counseling and testing on site mm -hmm. is really meant to eliminate as many barriers as possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are some typical issues that young people have, um, and maybe they might not even be aware that these are some health concerns yet. So that's p part of the, the project, is to kind of reach out and offer mm -hmm. some prevention work before it becomes an issue where it's too serious or maybe too late to receive the type mm -hmm. of care that's needed. All right. Have you guys enlisted um, any of the youth that come to go out there and maybe like, um, are they like dissemination of like different product, like stuff that, um, that the Mass Clearing House has or, you know, do you have them involved with, you know, the dissemination or the marketing of? Yep, we do have our peer educators out of Hope for Youth program, which mm -hmm. offer materials that we have and materials out of Mass Clearing House to different organizations. We're actually going to be at the uh, Youth Peace, Peace Conference next weekend and at Youth Pride offering some of the same material. Where is that going to be? Um, the Youth Peace Conference is going to be at the Jeremiah Burke School on Saturday, I think okay. from 12 to 5. Pride will be at the Commons area, Boston Common, mm -hmm. and that's also an all-day event as well. Mm -hmm. um, so th we have opportunity for our young people to help participate and outreach to people that mm -hmm. look like them, that you know, talk like them, you know, because it, it helps to hear mm -hmm. it from your peer as well. So what do you get like as far as, I was going to ask you about the return rate and how do you get them to come back, but um, I know we got to wrap it up, but if you could just kind of briefly um, state a little bit about that. Um, I think what it is is just about giving them the choice, giving mm -hmm. them the freedom, off being as transparent as possible about our services okay. and educating them and not off not pressuring them. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that brings people back, you know, Absolutely. and being a caring adult is also very important when mm -hmm. you want a young person to um, heed your advice Absolutely. or, you know, Absolutely. stay safe. Absolutely. I think just to add on to that real quick, um, I think it's important to have a space in which not only are you, are you in a space that's competent mm -hmm. racially, but right. also in terms of your sexuality. Absolutely. So it's a place where you don't have to compartmentalize. You have to sort of break down. I have to be black here and can't mm -hmm. be gay here. It's a space you can be all of who you are. And mm -hmm. that's what Glass is well, about. Thank you, Ernest thank and you. Fabiola. Um, what's the number again where they can reach out to both uh, of you? 617-266-3349. Okay, excellent. Thank you for joining us in the living Thank room. You. And um, information is definitely some vital information. And the community definitely needs to support all of our youth, regardless of sexuality and things like that, because these are all our children, and we need to put our arms around them and support them just like we support any other child in our community. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back in a moment.